Hello everyone, this is Vijay Z32, back again. Today I'm doing something a little bit different, talking about something a bit different. It's not playing card related, I actually debated with myself for a while on whether or not I was going to do this. There's been some controversy during this past week in regards to a YouTuber, a YouTube channel, nothing to do with playing cards or magic. It's a gaming channel. And that gaming channel is Susie Lou. And in a fair bit of controversy, um, there's a lot of videos you can watch on YouTube, and also she's done a video talking about it as well. I suggest you search, you know, CG Lou controversy if you haven't seen this stuff, and get both sides of the story. Really, I, I don't, I won't say just you know look at these so-called hate videos. By the way, this is not a hate video. I do not hate. Susie Lou or her channel per se. I dislike what she's doing right now, the way she's going about things. But I don't hate her. And I've actually watched a lot of videos on her channel, a lot of let's plays. I'm sure some of you may have as well. She's a pretty popular channel, over two hundred thousand subscribers, two hundred and thirty. Um so I don't hate her. And I want to stress that because she did this video a few days ago talking about what was going on and she claimed you know there's all these hate videos going out there talking about this controversy no they were not hate videos they were informative videos they were people uh talking about this news just because you're criticizing her or have a different viewpoint than her does not make it hate and I dislike that she's throwing around the word hate so much in that video, calling these people haters, saying hate videos. And a lot of the comments on that video are also calling everyone haters and whatnot. We'll get into all that in a moment. How this all started, if you're not familiar with it, and I suggest checking out other videos that have more information on it. I'm not going to be using any clips or anything like that. This video I'm going to keep it simple, straightforward. There was a YouTuber, Mark After Dark, I believe it is, um, who did a video on a Let's Play on some game. I'm not saying, I believe it was Last Guardian. And he used a little snippet from one of her videos on the same game, from the end of that game, where she was playing uh, The Last Guardian. He took a little snippet from the end of her video and he used it for the intro in his video and she immediately flagged it when she found out about it as a uh, copyright infringement she, she gave it a copy strike i believe actually he bragged about it to her on twitter and she immediately threw up red flags over it which is overreacting in my opinion just, just blatant overreaction but Probably he shouldn't have bragged about it. <laughs> Maybe he did intentionally to try and get views and get her attention. I don't know. Um, so she threw out this copy strike immediately on the video, claiming it's not fair use. She also posted a tweet which she has since deleted, where she claimed her face was copyrighted. Uh, no, that's not how it works. This is not copyrighted. Your face is not copyrighted. There's no such thing as a copyright on your face. Which is funny, considering her boyfriend, Stijo, who's also a gamer on YouTube, claims to be a lawyer, went to law school, supposedly, apparently, I believe that's confirmed, um, but claims to be a lawyer, but no proof whatsoever that he is actually a lawyer, or that he actually practices or works for a law firm, and yet she's throwing out these claims where her face is copyrighted. Just hilarious. Um, and I apologize if I'm I mean a lot. <laughs> I'm just catching myself. I, it's a Toastmaster. I mean, I used to be a Toastmaster, so. I hear people saying um and all the time. But anyways, getting off track. <laughs> so, she attacked this video on the small YouTube channel. And immediately people are saying, oh, they're trying to piggyback on your success and whatnot. No, that's not what it is at all. From everything I've seen on other videos talking about it and my interpretation of the rules is it is 100% fair use because he took the clip 
did a, a zoom in and a zoom out. He added some captions to it. He added a little joke at the end of it, the Michael Jordan clip. 100% fair use. It was a parody. It was uh, transformative. He did not just take... Also, he cut out a lot of parts of her video. He chopped it down. And it's a 25-second snippet. It's 100% fair use, as far as I can tell by the rules. That being said, I do want to bring up something she mentioned in her video, as I've uh, also mentioned. And that is that she mentioned in her video that people were talking about the fair use rules and they were pointing out this piece on one of the websites, I think it was on Stanford or whatever, about fair use rules. And she was claiming that how, oh, they're just pointing out this one paragraph that, um, you know, supports your point and whatnot, and not showing the whole thing. Well, she turned around and did the exact same thing in her video, where she pointed out a small snippet that she felt benefited her side of the story, without actually mentioning the other parts that the other channels had mentioned. Both well, she's kind of, she has come out as being very hypocritical. That is just one of the uh, hypocritical things that she has done. Another one is that she is, you know, complaining that this, you know, video was not fair use, even though it 100% is by everything that I've seen and other people have seen. But at the same time, she has actually had copy strikes against her channel and has done other things that would violate fair use. And yet she's going after this channel for something that is, as far as I can tell, fair use. <laughs> and so many cases, so many examples. See, uh, a couple of years back when she was still starting out, posted a live stream of an election in the UK on her channel. That was a blatant ripoff, blatant theft, blatant copyright issue. And she just kind of shrugged it off and said, well, she, she, she didn't realize what she was doing. She was just starting up. She did stop eventually when she kind of realized she shouldn't be doing that. But she still did it. And there's one thing, you know, to make an innocent mistake early on in your career, if you will. However, she's still doing it. There has been a number of videos that have been pointed out where she has taken a video from another YouTube channel and uploaded to her own channel and is monetizing those videos. One such one was a GameSpot demo video, which she has since taken down. There's another one, which is a Square Enix video, and it's possible she has permission to upload these, but I find it unlikely. And on top of that, there's also been a couple from another channel, N... I have it on here somewhere, NCG, which I can't really find that channel. I know I've seen that channel, that logo before. One of them is apparently monetized, one is not. But, um, again, that's not acceptable. When you turn around and copy strike someone, a smaller YouTube channel, by the way, which is bullying, in my opinion, for something that is blatantly fair use, while you're illegally doing stuff on your channel, that's hypocrisy at its finest. On top of that, in that video and in some of her other videos, in the video she was she did a couple of days ago talking about this situation, she has disabled ratings. So you can like or dislike a video. You have no idea of knowing how many people are actually liking or disliking. I disagree with that, and I don't do that in any of my videos. I disagree with anyone who does that. What are you afraid of? Let us see who is liking or disliking your video. There's no reason not to do that unless you are hiding something. And she is hiding the fact that people are disliking her video. Very blatant. On top of that, uh, speaking of hypocrisy, let's bring up one more thing. She did a reaction to a PewDiePie Rewind 2018 video, I believe it was. And in that video, there was a clip 
of a girl. Another gamer who basically was going to send out a copy of Strike the PewDiePie, I believe, for something. And she kind of laughed about it and everything because it's the same situation. It was like a very small clip that was used. It was modified, transformative. It was parody. And she was going to throw out a copy strike at PewDiePie for it. Well, Susie Lou was laughing about that, and now she's doing the exact same thing. Again, hypocrisy. And by the way, let me say that the reason why I'm doing this video is because I feel it's the only way that I can kind of properly address the situation and reach out to Susie to some extent because she has blocked me on Twitter and this is going back a year or so when I called her out on something and she didn't like it and she blocked me. What I called her out on was the fact that in 2017 there was McDonald's employees in the UK who was striking, they wanted to raise, they wanted to earn more money. Fair play to that, in my opinion. She spoke out against that, saying that they were looking for handouts. They were the ones looking for handouts. Meanwhile, C is the one that has a gaming channel that is supported by Patreons who are giving her actual handouts for something that adds nothing to society, or at least these workers at McDonald's are contributing to society. They're selling burgers, which is supporting farmers and supporting the bread industry and vegetable farmers. You know, they're supporting something, they're contributing to society even in a small way. Susie Lou is not contributing to society by playing video games on her channel. Not one bit. But she is criticizing them for wanting to raise. Meanwhile, she's sitting there accepting donations on her Patreon and making, you know, a fair amount of money. That's just not cool. So she blocked me on Twitter for that. And she has been blocking many people on Twitter recently. Anyone who has criticized her recently or had a differing opinion than hers on the situation or even so much as asked a question or offered support have been blocked. Anyone speaking about this controversy on Twitter have been blocked by her. And on top of that, just the other day, she privatized her Twitter account. So now she's gone full on into hiding to avoid the situation. You don't deal with situations by avoiding them, Miss Susie Lou. You deal with them by confronting them and by dealing with them. With them. On top of that, her boyfriend Stijo has also blocked me and others for speaking out about it. And let's talk about Stijo for a moment. Stijo is also a gamer who apparently calls himself a lawyer to point out that uh, referring to yourself as a lawyer, identifying yourself as a lawyer when you're not, I believe is a criminal offense. You can't represent yourself as a lawyer if you're not, which he does full out on his Twitter say, lawyer. But, you look at what he does, he plays video games on YouTube, pretty much all day, so where is he doing, you know, practicing law? I don't think that he is. Anyway, Cito is the one that actually advised Susie to file a copyright on this, to, to put out a copyright strike, and again, also misinterpreted everything uh, regarding fair use. By the way, I want to point out that what fair what Susie Lou brought up about fair use in her video was that a uh, the copy holder can you know go after someone if they feel it's I forget what it was exactly but basically she feels like she has a right to go after this person for using fair use uh, for using her stuff but the way they used it on the fair use rules. They don't have to ask for permission. So again, she's misinterpreting things. And I apologize, I'm kind of all over the place, but there's lots I want to talk about. Uh, on top of that, speaking about her blocking people, she is actually, sad, uh, actually shadow banning people on YouTube, or deleting their comments, moderating them, 
because I posted a fair amount of comments on that video that you did. And guess what? You won't find a single one of them. In fact, I encourage you to go check out that video and look through the comments. You won't find one single comment criticizing her or having an opposing view because she is moderating them all, deleting them, banning people, such as myself. And that is censorship. It's bad enough that she's blocking people on Twitter and privatizing herself so nobody can see her Twitter, so she can avoid everything. But then to go on YouTube and delete and ban comments, 100% censorship. And not cool. And I'm going to say, you know, if you can't handle the heat, Miss Susie Lou, it's out of the kitchen. Move on if you like. Do something else. Because, and this goes, you know, with people designing playing cards as well. With creators on Kickstarter and whatnot. As a creator, whether it's on YouTube or Kickstarter, whether it's a gaming channel, or playing cards, you have to be willing and open to taking criticisms and, you know, having varying opinions on stuff and having different viewpoints thrown at you and having people suggest stuff. You have to be willing to take criticisms. If you can't do that, you're in the wrong line of work. Another thing I want to point out is that she claimed, you know, channels, smaller channels, like myself, talking about this, are doing it for views. No, I'm not doing this for views. I'm doing this because people deserve to know the truth about what's going on in the situation and not your biased opinion on it. And people deserve to see both sides, so I encourage you to check out her video. I encourage you to check out other videos, and you will see that C is in the wrong. Uh, one of those, you know, channels is Tipster, I believe it's called. And there's GG Gaming, and there's a variety of channels that have done videos over the last few days. Some have done subsequent videos as well, after she did her video. And I highly suggest, you know, getting both sides of the story, and you will see that C is in the wrong. Going back to Steedzo very quickly, I think it's interesting that Steedzo advised her to copy strike this. Because last year, he almost lost his channel, and even did a video on why he might be losing his channel, which I suggest you check out, over what was a 20-second song playing in the background on a live stream of Far Cry, I believe it was. There was a, a little snippet of a song playing on the radio in the background, and it was copy striped by the owner of that song. And he fought it and went back and forth, and I guess that's why he almost lost his child, but he didn't. But he is very critical of that, saying that, oh, it's only 20 seconds out of like a seven hour stream. It was in the background. Uh, you know, it was transformative and whatnot. Well, guess what? That's the exact same thing that Mark After Dark was doing. It was a transformative video. It was a short video, part of a much longer video. The exact same thing that happened to him, and he's advising Susie, his girlfriend, to copy strike the video. More hypocrisy. On top of that, uh, you know, she's claiming other channels are getting views from this and whatnot. Well, she just posted a video, and she is the one actually getting views off of this whole situation, which I think is pretty interesting. Also, and you can check out her stats uh, for views and stuff like that on socialwave.com, of course, after subscribers, which is very interesting. A few days ago, she started losing subscribers. She lost about a thousand, I believe. All of a sudden, the numbers have jumped back up. That does not seem reasonable, realistic, or plausible, in my opinion. And there's been accusations of her using subbots to get those subscribers back because she lost them. And I think there's something to that. First of all, she talked about in another video 
a month or so ago was just talking about certain things, addressing certain rumors. And she admitted full on to using subtrains back when she was first starting out and only had a few hundred subscribers. And eventually she got busted for that and lost those subscribers. But she full on admitted to using subtrains early on. She did not admit to buying subscribers. Wouldn't be surprised if she does that as well. But, um, now all of a sudden she loses subscribers and she regains them almost immediately. Very suspicious, especially considering you look at the number of views on her videos as well. She has 230,000 subscribers. Most of her videos average 20 to 30,000 views. Most of them. Some of them have a lot less. Some of them have a bit more. I also noticed something a little bit odd, and that is it seems most of the videos that actually have a decent amount of views, I think the highest I saw was 80,000 or so, are the first videos of her Let's Plays. She starts a Let's Play, a bunch of people tune in, and then the numbers plummet. But I think it's kind of interesting that, you know, as successful as she seems, she has 230,000 subscribers, she averages about 10% of those subscribers in views. It makes you wonder, considering the fact that she admitted to subtraining and she's regained subscribers she lost after this whole controversy started, makes you wonder how many of these subscribers on her channel are actually real. Especially considering the fact that she blocks anyone who criticizes her. She blocks people on Twitter. How is anyone even subscribing to her in the first place when she is so egotistical and, and what's the word I'm thinking? <laughs> Whatever. You know, it's kind of weird. But you're going to get those stats for yourself and make your own viewpoints. I don't know for a fact that she's doing that. I also want to point out another hypocrisy that I just remembered, and that is that she was criticizing, it's just funny, she was talking about all these videos, the hate videos that are criticizing her and whatnot, yet she turns around and she does the same thing in that video a couple of days ago. She's criticizing and calling people haters because they're speaking out against her. Again, very hypocritical. And she's been claiming, she claimed in that video as well, uh, false rumors and stuff like that. They're not rumors, and they're not false. Uh, people are just speaking the truth. They're just telling the other side of the story, which you are not acknowledging. And are twisting into your own side of things. And again, I disagree with what she's doing on her YouTube videos, where she, and I mean even her Twitter, where she's deleting comments, shadow banning people, blocking people on Twitter, privatizing her Twitter and it speaks volumes to me when you go to her videos and you, all you see is people going oh, I love you Susie, oh you're so awesome, I love your games and when are you going to start this game and that game and you're so beautiful and stuff like that you don't see one comment where people say hey you did horribly in this gameplay or no you're in the wrong with this copy straight thing or anything like that, you don't see any comments that criticize her or oppose her because they all get deleted or banned. Case in point, I can tell you that for a fact that's hap what happened to me. And you won't find any of my comments on her video that she posted the other day for that reason. If you go to somebody's YouTube channel and all you see is people kissing up to her in the comment section, you know there's something wrong and fishy about that. Because there's always going to be someone who's going to disagree with something or have a different opinion. Especially in this case, with something so controversial. So many different things that she's doing wrong. And some of these channels like Tipster have given her the opportunity, offered her the opportunity to come on the channel and, you know, make their case. And she is outright refused. And she's blocked people on Twitter who are trying to, you know, offers support and
What else was he going to see? <laughs> um, anyway, there's just a lot of hypocrisy on her part, a lot of misinformation on her part, in my opinion, a lot of weird stuff going on. It's very controversial. I disagree with it. I disagree with her attacking other channels for it. By the way, I will also point out something I disagree with that she talked about in that video she did the other day. And that was where she claimed, you know, she was talking about all these supposed hate videos. And she claimed that, you know, she talked to people at YouTube and they were investigating it. And that those channels had been flayed, those videos had been flayed. A, I'm pretty sure that's not how YouTube works. B, those channels did nothing wrong. C, it shows that she is attacking smaller YouTube channels, attacking people who oppose her viewpoint and who are criticizing her. And again, that is censorship. One more thing I want to mention. She has previously posted videos where she attacked other female gamers who she referred to as booby streamers. Saying that they were shaking their ass or flaunting their cleavage in their gaming videos. And then horny boys were coming to her videos and saying, hey, so it's your ass or whatever. And she disliked that and she, you know, didn't like that and stood up to it. And, you know, I applaud her for not going to that level. However, in a recent clip she posted on Twitter where she was promoting a new series that she started, she was wearing, you know, what could be described as a sexy outfit, and she was shaking her ass for that video, which was like a 20 second video. On top of that, if you go to her Patreon, there's a tier that's $100, that's a special thank you, and in that, she has a picture, which you can also see on Instagram, where she basically has a topic. So you're complaining about so-called booby streamers, but and especially because they're getting donations for shaking their ass and whatnot. But here you are asking for $100 for a special thank you. Again, more hypocrisy. The hypocrisy with Suzu and Stizo just is never-ending. They seem to think that they are very, uh, they seem to feel like they're very, they come across as being very entitled. They seem to think that they can do whatever they want, but nobody else can do anything. They seem to think that nobody can say anything bad about them. And they seem to want to live in this protective little bubble. They're protected. Uh, Twitter accounts and modded YouTube videos, block comments where nobody can say anything bad about them. And that to me, that to me screams psychological issues, quite frankly, I want to say. I don't want to attack her or say anything bad, but I mean, if I was a psychologist, which I'm not, I would see, I would say that there's something not quite right about that. My personal viewpoint. Uh, it could be wrong, but eh, it's pretty bad when you're silencing critics left and right, and trying to silence critics, left and right. It's also bad when you copy strike people for stuff that is actually, you know, allowed, basically. Like, that, that guy did nothing wrong. He has not, by the way, he commented that he has not appealed to copy strike. Why hasn't he done that? That, obviously, he knows he's in the wrong. No. The reason, as I understand it, according to Tipster, that he has not actually gone after or appealed to copy strike is because when he does that, she will get his personal information and obviously he's concerned about giving her his personal information. And I don't know why that is, why they, the other channel would get this person's personal information. It really makes no sense to me. But that is apparently the case. But he will be appealing it once he gets a P.O. box, again, credit to Tipster for that stuff. Credit to the other channels that I mentioned. If I, I think I mentioned a couple of videos, GG Gaming. Um, 
and all the other ones that you can check, you can search on YouTube, the Caesar Controversy, and you'll see these videos. And you know, that's where I've gotten most of my information from, as well as my own personal experience with her blocking me, banning my comments, and my own personal opinion of her. Like I said, I think she's got a pretty big ego. I think she feels very entitled. I think she lives in a protective bubble. And she needs to learn how to, you know, handle criticisms. And she can't. She needs to get off the hell off YouTube. By the way, as was pointed out as well by Tipster, abusing YouTube's uh, copy strike systems can lead to a channel termination. So she is facing the loss of her channel, and this I think is what happened to Stijo when he had that copy strike issue and almost lost his channel. I think this is you know, what his problem was. C is facing a loss for channel because of his false copy strike allegation against Mark after dark work for something that is 100%, in my opinion, and other people's opinions, fair use. So, C could be losing her channel as a result of that. And I really don't think it's in her best interest as well as other people have mentioned to take this to court because it's going to cost a lot of money to attack a channel that makes no money, really, or very little money, and for what, really? What purpose? It serves no purpose for something that she's in the wrong on. And, quite frankly, Tipster has also invited her, has asked her to retract her copy strike on it. She has not done so. She is refusing to do so. She's really, you know, sticking to her guns on this, and then they come back to bite her in the ass. And, you know, maybe she deserves to be taught a lesson. Anyway, that is that. I apologize if I was a little bit all over the place. I apologize if I missed out on anything. Um, I apologize if I rambled about certain things. Just a lot of things that, you know, I disagree with that she's doing. Blocking people on Twitter. Banning your comments. Deleting your comments. Disabling ratings so people can't see how many dislikes she got on that video. I would love to know what that is. Attacking channels, calling them haters because of speaking out against her. For some reason, she feels like nobody can speak any ill will of her. That's wrong. But guess what? That's life. And people like myself have the right and the freedom of speech to speak out and criticize you and tell people what we think and what we feel about you and explore within our rights. This is not a hate video, not attacking you personally. I am, like I said, I've watched many of your videos, liked many of your videos, but what you're doing is wrong. It's all about wrong and you need to stop and you need to retract your, your copy strike. You need to apologize, in my opinion. And you need to set the record straight. Stop lying to all your viewers. Stop, you know, spinning it in your favor. And stop brainwashing people as well, as somebody said. A lot of brainwashing. Brainwashing by spinning things in your favor. Brainwashing by only having comments that kiss your ass. Brainwashing by not allowing people to see your Twitter. That is that. Comment, rate, subscribe. Let me know what you think. And I hope more and more YouTubers get on this bandwagon and speak out against Suzy Lou and what she is doing because everyone deserves to find out about this. And let me say first one more thing, and that is I don't care that she has 200,000 subscribers. I don't think that she deserves special treatments or benefits, or preferential treatments than anyone else. And if she is violating, which I do believe she is, YouTube's uh, copy strike system. She needs to be removed from YouTube, in my opinion. And she has done that. She's also abusing YouTube systems by going after channels that speak out against her. Like she fully admitted in that video, where she said, I'm having those channels investigated, they're being investigated. That's abuse of YouTube and their systems. That is that. We'll see you next time. More thanks for watching.
sí, de Yippie Opinion.